Hello everyone, today we are shooting a car commercial with this thing, the DJI Osmo. Now if your first thought is, that's ridiculous, well then you are actually kind of right. Uh, we're not going to get you know, the level of production quality that you would expect from a $500,000 Lexus commercial, but the question is how close can we get with minimal resources? You know, uh, it wasn't that long ago, only a few years ago, that cameras like this couldn't do very much. They couldn't do very high frame rates, they couldn't do high resolutions, and they weren't very stable. In fact, stability was terrible on them. But a lot has changed. You know, GoPro led that, and then DJI comes along, and they're gonna up the ante, so to speak. So there's a lot higher frame rates and resolution and stability with the DJI Osmo action than there are with just about anything else on the market right now. So we're curious to see how cinematic we can make this guy. So my colleague Richard and I are kind of hodgepodging some things together. And uh, we're on this beautiful country road here in rural Ontario, Canada. And we're gonna try to get some of your classic car shots that you see in just about every sort of commercial. Um, and we're gonna see if we can do it all with a very minimal amount of gear. So the first thing that we have to consider is that we don't have all the resources that a large production has, namely a Russian arm. And a Russian arm is a big crane that goes on top of a vehicle that allows them to get moving shots very cinematically and very controlled. Of course, we don't have that. The way we're getting around that is a bit fun. We've taken this audio boom pole here um, and then we've also increased its strength and we've put the Ronin S on it. So we've rigged it to the Ronin S with a little bit of counterweights to make it work. And this will operate just as our boom pole. So it's basically our mini Russian arm. So we're really excited to see how this works. I'll be in the back of the vehicle with um, some climbing gear that will hard mount me into the vehicle so there's no risk of me coming out at any time. We'll be traveling quite slow. And one of the things with car commercials is that you actually don't travel very fast. If you get your camera angles right and you have your camera angles low to the ground, you can actually uh, simulate a very fast moving vehicle with not very high speed. So it allows us to keep everything within controllable speeds um, very safely. So let's get going. Now we're gonna be shooting most of our footage with the following settings. I'm using the D Cine Lake picture profile, but not the HDR. Now, the HDR on this camera is actually quite impressive, but I like the look of D Cine Lake and I know it's going to give me a bit of range in post production. We're shooting 4K 24p with the Rocksteady stabilization on. Now, the camera does 4K 60p with Rocksteady, which is awesome, but there isn't much of a need for us to shoot high frame rates for car commercials. We're also using ND so that we can slow down our shutter speed and get a much more cinematic motion blur. Now when it comes to the moving footage, we're after some very key shots and they are as follows. Number one is the follow car. So these are shooting out of the back of the car to capture the front of the hero vehicle. If the camera doesn't need to move, then you can just use a car mount, which to be perfectly honest is safer. Another thing to keep in mind is that the Osmo uses a very wide lens, which will distort the front of the hero car if you get too close. To get around this, I made sure that the camera's lens distortion correction was on, and then I didn't allow the car to get too close, choosing instead to use the resolution of 4K to then punch in and get a better perspective on the car. The second is the chase car. Now, this is shooting from the front, trying to get a rear tracking shot so that we cover the majority of the car's angles. Unfortunately, we didn't often have two lanes traveling in the same direction, so we weren't able to get any side view shots for any lengthy period of time. I could have really used those shots for the edit, but safety always takes priority. The closest I got was getting into the hero vehicle and then booming out to try to get some side profile shots. Mostly these did not work, but I was able to get at least one decent interior driving shot. Next up, we get out of the car for some passing shots. I had three in particular I knew I wanted. With the Ronin on a pole, I knew I could get a great jib shot. That one was quick and easy. Following that is what I call the leaf shot. Again, we want to show the speed and the power of the car without it going too fast. We went and dug up some leaves from the forest and then scattered them on the road. The next thing is for me to dolly back with the camera while the hero car passes me and goes through the leaves. Lastly, I wanted a changing corner shot. Now these are used quite often in car spots and I found a great hairpin turn that could play the part. I dolly forward to the car as it approaches and then I chase it on foot for a very short distance. The last thing we did was to park the car and get some detail and beauty shots. I grabbed a Cinevate slider that allowed me to get some nice dynamic dashboard shots. And the last thing to do was getting some engine okay. sounds. And then rev it. The Osmo captures surprisingly great sound without Give peaking. Give a bunch of different ones. Post-production is going to take us the rest of the way there. They say imitation is the best form of flattery. So the first thing I did <clears throat> was sneakily download some car commercials. I'm not going to tell you how to do that, but you can probably figure it out. I placed them on the timeline and made a cut where they made cuts. 
Then I tried to match some of the shots and fill in where I didn't have matching shots. The great thing about the Osmo action is the stability at 4K. Now this allowed me to reframe so many shots to make them far more engaging. Then I replaced the music with stock music from Artlist.io. Normally looking for good canned music is the worst and most infuriating part of my job, but this kind of video I just searched powerful and I would say that 50% of my options were actually quite usable. I auditioned a bunch with the cut until I settled on just one. I sweetened the edit to the music and then sent the cut to DaVinci Resolve 15 for the grade. In Resolve, I aimed to achieve a few things. First was color correction, just adjusting levels mostly. The dynamic range was decent and allowed me to adjust without too much noise. And then I made a quick stylized grade to taste. Second was tracking the car with power windows to bring the attention to the car in each shot. Even though we shot this with a spherical lens, I still added some anamorphic style light flares just because I think it looks kind of cool. I toned them down quite a bit as I didn't want them to be too obvious. I also vignetted some areas in the scene that were too bright and took the attention away from the vehicle. I also power windowed the interior driving clip and added lens blur to simulate a more shallow depth of field that you'd find with a cinema lens. And then I finished off by adding in all the engine sound effects, balanced audio levels, and was done. And just before we have one last look to see how it all came together, I want to say thanks for watching and please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and find us on all the internet places. That's it for now. Most importantly, go out there, have some fun, and happy shooting. Impressive. Good shot. <laughs> what I do.